In this video, we're going to take a look at the backstory of how grading cards came to be such a common thing. Let's get into this. Nowadays, the grading of sports cards is a massive industry, but this wasn't always the case. For many collectors who collected in their younger years, when they returned to the hobby as adults, this whole card grading thing was something that essentially seemed brand new. So where did this come from? And how did it become such a major part of the sports card hobby? Well, to consider this point, let's go back to the early existence of PSA. PSA originally opened its doors in 1991, largely in response to a string of counterfeit 1989 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Jr. rookie cards that had entered the market. When they first began, their goal as a company was essentially to weed out the fakes. However, during the early 90s, collectors by and large just weren't that interested in what PSA was trying to do, at least not enough for card grading to make any major waves into the card collecting hobby. It's even been said by some people who worked with PSA during those early years that during the mid-90s, PSA was even even considering shutting its doors. There just wasn't enough interest in their business model to sustain a business. But PSA decided to stick with it through those early rough years, hoping that eventually their card authentication service would become recognized as something really useful in the hobby. And with hindsight, of course, now we know that that was definitely the right move for them. During the late 1990s, a convergence of several things occurred that really helped PSA reach further into the sports card hobby. One was the resurgence of interest in baseball in the US due to the Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa chase for the single season home run record, a record that had stood the test of time for decades. And the other was the emergence of the dot com boom and the sudden massive growth of the online marketplace known as eBay. Once people started buying their cards online, where the best they could hope for before buying a card was a good quality picture or scan, buyers wanted a better sense of the quality of that card they were getting. It was too easy for pictures to hide this or that little issue a card might have, which would affect the resale value of that card. So suddenly, people in the hobby really began to recognize the value and usefulness of buying an authenticated and graded card rather than just a raw card that might have some unknown issues with it. At a card show or a local sports card shop, a buyer could look closely at a card and make a decision on its quality with their own eyes. But on the internet, this was much harder to do. And so PSA took off. Between 1991 and 1998, PSA had graded a total of about 1 million cards. In 1999 alone, they matched that number, and they continued to grade at least 1 million cards per year from that year on. In more recent years, that number has climbed all the way to over 2 million cards per year. Right around that same time, in 1998 and 1999, not only did PSA's card grading business start taking off, but SGC in 1998 and BGS in 1999 also started grading cards. Those three names are the ones most worth mentioning from those early years since they still are amongst the biggest card grading companies today. But at the time, they were just a few of the many card grading companies that suddenly entered this brand new market. Most failed. But despite PSA's dominance in the grading market, there was enough scraps for SGC and BGS to eke out a solid business as well. When SGC started, it started small and stayed smallish for some time. It is only more recently where they have really gotten to the point where they are mentioned more frequently as one of the top grading companies. When BGS started, on the other hand, it started big. When Beckett Media created its card grading arm, Beckett Grading Services, BGS, in 1999, they were already one of the biggest names in the sports card world. Everyone who collected sports cards in the 90s knows about Beckett Magazine, as it was the go-to resource for determining card values for many years. So though BGS was never quite able to catch up to PSA in terms of market share in the card grading industry, they were the closest for many, many years, and they still are today, although the landscape is starting to change more recently, and it is possible to see SGC rising up into the number two spot as far as market share is concerned, potentially sometime soon. It's a hard market to pierce when those three have established themselves so strongly. But in more recent years, there seems to be two other companies that have managed to have a bit more staying power behind their efforts, CSG and HGA. And while many consider PSA, BGS, and SGC as the big dogs of the industry, CSG and HGA seem to be coming in with a solid foundation that may enable them to stay in this space long term, especially CSG. If you've been following my channel, then you would have seen quite a few videos that I've made about CSG, as they in particular seem to be situating themselves to become a big name in the card grading game as they are approaching it very strategically and have made some really well-considered steps to root themselves deeper in the industry. CSG may only have entered the sports card grading marketplace in February of 2021, but as the latest arm of CCG, they were born from a brand of a company that has been in the grading space for even longer than PSA, just not in the sports card grading space specifically. CCG has been around since 1987, and different arms of their business are industry leaders in 
their own grading spaces, such as coin grading, paper money grading, comic book grading, and more recently they have jumped to pretty much the top of the list in Pokemon and Magic card grading as well. They have the infrastructure to rise meteorically in the sports card grading industry. Add to this their close relationship with Fanatics, the CEO of Fanatics is a large investor in CSG, and with eBay, eBay chose to work with CCG, CSG in starting up their trading card authentication service, and you have the recipe for a company that has the potential to stir up the pot in the sports card grading market. HGA as well has made a name for itself, and though their future in the grading space I would suggest is a little harder to predict than CSG, which seems fairly deeply rooted, they have carved out for themselves a niche that may give them staying power as well. Like CSG, HGA entered the sports card grading market space during the recent sports card boom, and that, combined with the growing backlog of many card grading companies, provided an opening for them to enter the market. And once they got there, a few other features they offer have helped them to stay. Two things in particular seem to be the things that draw some people to HGA. One is their reliance on AI-assisted technologies to determine grades, which is important to mention because one of the more common digs at PSA and other card grading companies is the ample space for human error in determining cards' grades. Most grading companies rely on the human eye to analyze a card's grade, and humans make mistakes. HGA's approach is to try to be more objective through the use of assistive technologies. The second thing that has helped HGA have a niche following of its own is its approach to the aesthetic of the slab design itself. Whereas most grading companies take an approach where they try to minimize the distraction of their tag's design so that the card itself is the main focus, HGA has tried something else. Each card graded by HGA can have a uniquely created look to the tag in the slab, one that aims to match the look of the card itself. For some people, this is a well-appreciated artistic aesthetic, and for others, it's a distraction that takes away from the beauty of the card itself. And this is one of the reasons HGA seems to have a more of you love it or you hate it niche kind of following to them. The challenge for HGA long-term will be whether or not they are able to take what has made them enter the market with some strong beginnings and turn it into something that helps them stay there. And that is something that is still quite unknowable. They have a niche following, but whether that is strong enough to hold them through now that the sports card boom has turned back into a normal kind of market, and once the other grading companies have overcome their massive backlogs, is tough to know for sure. I personally am rooting for them as I think they provide something unique and competition in this market can definitely be a good thing for forward progress and innovation. But I would suggest that the jury is still out on whether or not they'll have that long-term staying power. With that being said, that's all we have for this video. Please come back again for the next one where we'll look at things you should consider when grading your cards.